I'm about to put this gearbox back together, this R380. Uh, it wasn't really on the front burner, I had other things to do, so today's the day when we're going to put it back together. But I got a very interesting comment from somebody who wanted to know what worn out parts look like compared to new parts and that's a very good question because sometimes a worn part if you haven't seen it before you don't know if it's worn hey that's a good one isn't it so typical problem is synchro meshes on these r380s and lt77s now the synchro mesh i think we've been through it before it's a little brass ring that fits on here onto a gear and it, uh, it, the idea is this taper here slows down the turning, the free turning of this gear so that it can be selected. There's, there's little uh, another sleeve that fits over that and then it joins these teeth together if you see what I mean. But how do you know if a gear is worn? This is a very good question. So what we're going to first do, I've got this brand new gear, bought it by mistake. I was looking for a, a reverse one but we ended up with a fifth gear one. I don't know what I've been drinking that night. Anyway. So, here's a good tip. Look at those teeth very carefully. I always refer to them about looking like a little coffin. You know, like they're wide at the top and then narrow at the bottom. But they've got a little point on them. So, just bear this in mind and have a good look. This is straight out of the box. Now, these came from Britpart. Don't, I know what you're going to say. Britpart, oh, terrible. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you get them from. They're all, they all come from the same place. But um, they're actually good quality, and even if you get them from Ashcroft, they'll probably come from Britpart anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, no, they're, they're quite good. Never had a problem with them. But this is what it should look like. The internal part where the bore is, they're, they're sort of bulletproof. You never see them wearing out inside here. But you do see these gears here, so have a good look. I, don't, I wonder if I can come very slowly and you can get that because I've noticed this camera is very slow to um, focus there we go, so that's that's a, that's a good one what we're going to look at, at now this is a, a reverse gear now uh, R380s have a synchroniser on reverse uh, but people still crash them into reverse because obviously this gear is going to try and go backwards and this is knackered. This is a particularly bad one. And you can see here how the front edge... Let me see if I can get that bit closer and focus. Can you see how that front, those front edges, there's nothing left of them? When people say they're grinding gears, they always think that the gears actually <laughs> are worn out. Well, they aren't. <laughs> they're never worn out. It's always the synchros. Because these are in, like in, in a constant mesh, so they're always constantly lubricated. But of course, reverse is a particularly nasty one because you've got, you're changing motion. So these are spinning round and the other shafts are trying to go the other way. So these tend to grind into gear. So if, you, if you're changing gear in an R380, you just pause that little bit before you plonk it into gear. Give them time to spin down. Okay, so that's, that's a, what's typical of a bad gear. And honestly, they're all the same. Doesn't matter what gear it is, it's the same system. So just check for that. Now I'm going to put a few still photographs, trying to get some close-ups, and I'm going to put them after this section so you can see. So I thought I'd, whilst I was on about parts that were worn out, I'll just put this little piece in here in the middle of this video uh, about the synchro hubs and what to look for on those the actual uh, selectors themselves. So I'm going to put a, a synchro ring in there and I'm going to take out the spring. Now I've already put new springs in here but uh, yeah, now we're going to turn that upside down. This is just to look at it. I'm not going to show you how to put it together because we've done that before. Uh, there we go, we'll take the spring out. And now we can take that apart. And you'll notice whenever you take these apart, sometimes they'll only go in one way. And second gear is marked on there with the big boss. You see, there's a, this is almost flush. And this one's stuck out a little bit. So then we can take this out. We'll move it to one side. 
it's these things in here that wear. So I'm going to just put this quickly through the parts washer and give it another clean up and we'll, we'll come back and see what it looks like. So I hope we can see this. I'm going to take some pictures, still, some stills as well. But really that's what it should look like. Now many years ago when I first took one of these to bits I thought these were all worn out. <laughs> but actually that's the way they're supposed to be. That's where the, uh, the teeth lock into of the gears. So uh, let me have one. Keep these a gear. So if we look inside, um, that's how it sort of goes together. And the gear, the teeth just touch on these, this front edge. And this is why these have got uh, like a slight cone to them, so they'll pull themselves into this groove. So that's what you're looking for. Generally speaking, there's not too much wrong with them. Um, just run your thumb round and feel if there's any high spots and you can just run a little grind a little uh, oil stone around there and take those off you know just like there there in particular there's a bit of a sharp edge we're going to sort that out but they will live again um, there's not much goes wrong with the tracking um, the groove there they're all pretty good so that's about the, those rings this bit here never nothing ever wears out with those but the thing is, if you want to replace this, if you find there's some damage on this, some really severe damage, you can only buy this assembly. You can't buy individual parts. The next thing we're going to look at is the synchronizer rings. These are brass. And um, again, We've got the old blue box ones again, Ashcroft gets them from Britpart anyway and just takes them out of the box so it doesn't really matter, we've seen all that type of stuff before. It doesn't matter because they are good quality. Now this is a used one. Notice how the teeth are worn out. They're shot. Okay, they're nasty and if you run your finger across the back it's really raised and rough okay so keep a look keep an eye on that and again I'm going to take some still pictures so you can see the parts what they look like because I you know I've got my little screen here which I'm looking at but I can't see it in great detail so I'm going to do that and I'm going to take a couple of pictures no I can't take pictures but I'll do it in a minute all right <laughs> I'll do it when I finish this section. So this is a new one. And this is what a new one should look like. And let's I'll tell you what, let's have a comparison, seeing they're only small, between the new one and the old one. Look at that. You can see how thin these teeth have got because the when the synchronizer's been going backwards and forwards, they're like the selector, and it's worn these away. But these are nice and thick, so that's how it should be. We don't have to worry too much about the internals. I have had some bad selectors um, that wouldn't quite fit properly and uh, it was a kind of a problem. Let me try and find that gear again. You see the selectors when they go on, so that's it when it's tight look. There's supposed to be a gap between here and if it's 20, 25 thou, whatever that is in metric, I don't know. But 25,000 is your minimum gap, all right? And, and a good rule of thumb is that the gear is generally flush with the synchro. Now, if this has been very worn and it's opened up a little bit, it's going to drop down and that gap is going to be absolutely nothing. So that means the synchronizer is not working and you'll crunch and grind gears. That's basically what it is. That's all it is to it. But, on the other hand, I have assembled gearboxes where these have been a little bit too narrow here. You know, the, the gap's been too small. And the gap has been way too wide. When that means when you start, start to put your circlips on and things like that. So, say for example, it's been like that. Uh, y y your gearbox just won't go together properly. So, you have to watch for that. 
So, you know, I, I've used these Britpark ones for a long time and I've been quite happy with them. So, uh, I'm, I'm not going to sort of really change. I mean, they've been okay. But I always change the synchro rings regardless. Sometimes you can get away with them, sometimes you can't. So that's what to look for. Um, bearings and things like that, well, it's kind of self-explanatory. What you want to look at on a bearing is are the needle, needle rollers all complete? Are they broken? What is the sleeve like? Is, it, is there a, is there a, a like, it, has it worn a, a groove inside? Who, who knows? But generally speaking, they're all right. When you put them together inside the bearing, put this in the bearing and rattle it around, and generally speaking, they're, they're always okay, you know. But we replace them anyway, because <laughs> we can. But while you're in there, you might as well do. You might as well replace them. But um, generally, very, very little trouble from the needle rollers. All right? So, you, like, doing a, an R380 is quite daunting. But there isn't that much. I mean, I don't know if you can see this one here. Let's have a look at that. There we go. Now again, if you can remember when we took this gearbox to bits, we put a big tie wrap around it so you can't lose all the bits. You know, whatever you do, you're never going to lose the bits. But it gives you a quick indication, you can feel that. That one's knackered. This one's good. These, these little ones that go inside the synchro, very little trouble. But what we're going to do now, is we're going to start to assemble this. Now, I've got a brand new shaft here. Ooh. This is what it should look like, all right? Don't accept inferior ones. If there's any chaffing on here, it's toast, it's finished. But again, these are supposed to be made in England, and it said Earcom. Have you even seen that? Earcom 20. I don't know what that means. I don't know who's done it, but... Uh, Generally speaking, I, I have very, very little problems with the shafts. And for the price, they are extremely good value, because look at all the machining on that. And it's hollow. And this is one of the reasons why you don't use um, gear oil on R380s. See these little tiny holes here? Well, the oil is pumped into this hole here, goes through the shaft, goes to the front bearing, you know, between your, your, your pinion, your primary motion bearing, but it's also squirted into your bearings where your gears run round, which is very good. Now, if you use a very thick oil, it has a hard time trying to get through here. On the old series gearboxes, they used to rely on drillings that were in the actual gear itself, and the shaft was on bronze bushes or brass bushes. And it wasn't the best idea because you had like a, an EP90 oil which was very thick and in winter there was no way that that was going to get through that hole and splash fed. So the R380 was quite a good uh, gearbox. So I'm not going to show you how to put this back together because we've already done that. But it, this was just a, a reply to somebody who asked a very good question, what do used parts look like? So I'm going to take some pictures uh, now and I'm going to stick them on the end of this video so you can see quite clearly because uh, you know, and use them as a reference if you do take a gearbox to part, apart what you're really looking for now this is an R380 LT77 LT77S it's exactly the same principle but once you once you know what you're looking at and you think oh well junk it you know if it, if it's any if you're suspicious about something junk it get a new one parts are cheap you know i mean how much was that gear that's a fifth gear. I think that was about £40. Pound. <laughs> Imagine going down to a workshop and saying, can you make me one of them? Because these are hardened, eh? So, £40. Pound. You, you, I mean, it's it, they're really, really cheap, considering all the engineering that goes into them. So anyway, I hope you like that. And uh, like I said, this Land Rover is going to get a lot better. And then we'll be able to, uh, next week, put this gearbox and engine into the frame because next week we're going to do some welding. We'll talk to you later. Bye.